Hi guys and welcome back to the first RAS Weekends video in Volume 2. Today we're going to be going over everything that is covered in the brand new patch in brief detail so you get an idea of the amount of work that has gone on for this patch and you can see what is coming with the patch as well. Now, of course, with all of these topics, guys, there is going to be deep dives, there's going to be interviews, there's going to be video guides on these topics. So today is just to serve to show you exactly how much has gone on and what you're going to expect from the patch. And if you do enjoy this content, guys, make sure you are subscribed, make sure you like this video and share it with anyone that you think might be interested. So let's start with the Illyrians, guys. As we can see out here, the Illyrians have been completely, completely overhauled. A quick note on that, though, guys. No major historical mod except for Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition and Rome Total Realism Version 7 have ever even added a proper Illyrian faction. Even then, the Illyrians were pretty much generic. Vanilla Rome Total War, of course, just completely neglects them. So RAS is bringing this new mysterious culture to life and bringing this region into the light to give it a ton of life, guys. And of course, the mod team hope that you're going to enjoy this culture and maybe learn a little bit more about it as something that is very uh, overlooked, we, will, we shall say, in historical mods and all that sort of thing. And of course, there are nine brand new factions that stretch all the way from the north up here, all the way down the Adriatic coast, down towards Epirus. So brand new nine factions for you guys to enjoy. And of course, with that, the RDAI themselves have been completely overhauled too. Now, along with that, guys, there are four brand new religions in the game to represent the different cultures of the Illyrians. And finally, guys, there are 33 brand new Illyrian units for you to enjoy, which equals about 231 brand new unit models, which is insane, and new reforms to go along with them. And I'd also like to finally thank Ahal for giving me all this information and allowing me to preview this stuff for you guys. Onto the units now, guys, and there has been a load of unit fixes, including LODs for the Galatothracians, the Ankenetans, and the Istrians to prevent crashes to desktop that plenty of people have been seeing. But there's also been some subtler, more um, immersion changes as well. For example, the Paeonian Cavalry that we see here, they now have seven variants along with the Tralian Infantry. Along with that though, guys, a lot of new generals have been added for the Greeks, just so that you were basically not just playing Greek generals everywhere. For example, we have the Lytian General in here, and we can see the Priennian and the Gortinian bodyguards here, and we'll zoom right in so you can appreciate this beautiful detailing that has been going on with these guys. But other factions include Aetolia, Achaea, Athens, Gortin, Knossos, and Litos that we've already mentioned, Priene, and the Thessalian League that have Thessalian cavalry as their general. In style, guys. In style. And of course, for our dear Mausolos, the leopard skins have been removed from the standard Greek bodyguard because it's historically inaccurate. One more subtle change is the fact that the Ambrachio Phalangites are now only recruitable for Epirus in Ambrachia. And to plug the gap, they have added these fantastic looking Epiro Phalangites. And finally, the Deuteroi are no longer all white but have a nice new look that gives them a little bit of extra color. There are also now three new Greek units as well. The Thessalian Peltas from Thessaly, the Arcadian Peltas from Arcadia, and the Cypriot Tarantine Cavalry that are now an AOR unit on Cyprus. I believe the first AOR unit on Cyprus, so that's really cool to see. 
And I just wanted to bring your attention, guys, to the amount of detail that goes into this mod. Look at these textures here for the seven unit variants of different units. Look how much detail and differences there are, how much they put into every single unit. Every single one of those textures has to be generated as a unique texture for that unit. Think about doing that for hundreds of units, guys. It's just insane. So from units to recruitment and recruitment centers overhaul, guys. Yes, the recruitment system has had a whole makeover. As you'll notice, there are now five recruitment centers for your faction. And don't be expecting to see these in the AI settlements because they are now only for the player. This prevents people like me, of course, <laughs> destroying them for that quick, easy gold all of the time. So the AI gets a little bit of extra time to recruit. They get to recruit a little bit quicker than you can. But to compensate for that now, guys, there are homelands per factions that will basically allow them to build recruitment centers up to any level, no matter the city. So no more useless towns anymore, guys. No more useless towns. And you'll also notice there are now no more culture buildings in there anymore that you can't destroy. They have been removed for a more streamlined system that is going to be worked on for quite a while, I think, by the mod team to try and find the sweet spot there with culture. For now, your culture comes from your recruitment building and your governor's palace as well. This lack of the colonies as well has meant that the AOR system has been completely cleaned up, guys. It means there's no longer a bit of a mess of recruitment in some cities that you might be able to recruit Macedonians and Thracians. It's been cleaned up, so it's a lot cleaner, and all the sort of uh, easy AOR options, shall we say, like the Rhodian Slingers at level 1 AOR in Rhodes, has been cleaned up to make sure that everything is working right with the AOR systems in Greece and Anatolia. Now let's move on to emergent factions, guys, where a huge amount of work has gone in. Many of the bugs and CTDs that you were seeing with the emergent factions previously was, for example, because Argos was coming out and just going ham with a million stacks that were constantly respawning. That has been fixed, along with the Egyptian revolt as well. That will no longer pump out hundreds of full stacks and then crash the game, guys. They've all been fixed, which I think is fantastic. There's been a load more changes on Emergent Faction, so I can't wait to show you a video, but I'll just give you a few brief rundowns, guys. They can now appear on basic revolts. They can appear on special scripts like the Egyptians, for example. But some of them now can be played from the start of the campaign. Think the Romano-British and Barbarian Invasion or the Ostrogoths, for example. So you're going to be able to click them on the screen. It's going to simulate the uh, what's happened up to that point, And you can go in and play them. I, for one, am really looking forward to playing Taras. <laughs> And now, cities that revolt may revolt to a remastered faction or a cultural generic faction. For example, if Corinth revolted here as the Antigonids, it may go to the GCS. If Argos revolts, it's going to go to Argos, for example. If some cities over here in Silesia revolt, they're going to become the Silesians to start with. But for example, if the Seleucids came and took nearly all the land back, but then they had another revolt, it's going to go back to the Silesians, which is really cool. I'm going to make for a lot much more dynamic playthrough with the emergent factions and with your faction trying to kill those emergent factions. So let's now move on to characters, guys. There has been a load of work done on characters, and I'm going to go into much more detail on this. But for now, we're going to go over it relatively quickly. The main thing is that a lot of the names have been overhauled. So basically, the anachronistic, the mythological and anglicized names have been replaced 
with the proper Greek sources and inscriptions, as much as is possible, of course, with the Latin alphabet to make them as accurate as possible. So for example, here is Antigonus rather than Antigonus. There is going to be loads more work on this going forward, guys, as well. So keep your eye out for the next patch. There's also been a huge amount of historical work on the family trees and the dynasties of the Diadochi. They now have in-depth family trees that trace their lineage. So as you can see, here we are with Antigonus and here are his parents and also Antigonus Monophthalmus, of course, a very famous Antigonid, and Chiraeus the Macedonian over there as well. So you're going to see this across many of the family trees of the Diadochi, which is really cool to see. Just the attention to detail in this mod, guys, is truly, truly insane and something to behold. But along with those family trees, loads of work has been done on the traits to sort of balance them out, bringing new traits to the Thracians and Anatolians as well. All of these city traits have now got awesome descriptions that you can kind of get a little bit of a description of the city as well, which is really cool. And of course, now we have new ancillaries that are customized per culture for the Greeks, Illyrians, Anatolians and Thracians, giving you even more role-playing capability and immersion when it comes to this. Like I say guys, there's going to be so much depth on this, so we're going to be doing a full interview on these traits and ancillaries, so stay tuned for that one. So let's now go through the gameplay changes for this patch guys and the first thing is that sort of cultural generic and rebel garrisons as we can see over here have been changed based on the strategic importance of the place and sort of the size of the town and how important it was historically so that it better represents the true size and feel of the garrisons remember this is just for the remastered regions though guys so out in the sticks in the celtic land it's going to be pretty much the same from the last patch but in the remastered regions which you should all be playing um, that's where these changes have taken effect along with that guys all of the remastered factions now have starting armies and cities balanced for the player and the ai respective of their sources and of course the perceived difficulty of the faction and of course the difficulty of each faction has been reviewed and changed if necessary of course remember guys not all factions are born equal some are designed there to be hard or will be hard based on their historical situation whereas some may be a little bit easier that is the way of the world that is the way of total war games you don't want all factions to be easy trust me I've played Paphlagonia, guys. <laughs> Honestly, guys, some of these changes are kind of mental, the amount of work that's gone into them here. So diplomacy and faction relations have now been completely overhauled based on historical sources and some understanding of the engine that came from Feral themselves. So all alliances and wars are now present for these remastered factions. As you can see, the Antigonids are at war with the Galatians. The Seleucids just at war with Bithynia, but they start with a whole host of allies in there as well to balance them out. And all of these factions now have factions that they are in fact friendly or rivaled with, basically kind of similar to the rivalry system in EU4 if you've seen that. So they will be for the AI scripted to either really like or really dislike factions based on the historical evidence about them, which is really cool because in my campaigns in 0.6.3, I've hardly ever seen the Ptolemies and Seleucids fight. So now it will be nice to see that finally happen. <laughs> this has really impacted AI behavior. So they should now be behaving in a lot more logical fashion, shall we say. And along with this, guys, the AI's personality has been completely reworked so that they will start to actually recruit decent balanced armies and accurate armies rather than filling them with just spams of trash, which are not fun to fight and really annoying to deal with. So that is fantastic. 
And now all of the remastered factions, guys, have named characters governing a lot of the cities, allowing you to govern a lot easier and choose, pick and choose generals where you will as well. And also, I just wanted to bring your attention to this for the Seleucids. Look at these guys. Look at their names, which is awesome because this guy is Mesopotamian. He's not Macedonian. We've also got this guy, Anu Iba... Oh, yeah. I'm going to pronounce that perfectly. Anu Ubalit Kefalon. Fantastic which is really, really cool. The only exception to these governed cities, guys, for the remastered regions is the Seleucids and Ptolemies outside of Anatolia because, of course, those regions are a work in progress. Still, these regions in the east, but you can see the Anatolian regions have all got their juicy, juicy governors and generals, which is really, really cool. Potato fatty! Potato fatty! Ha <laughs> ha! And finally, guys, a brand new mechanic that, of course, is still a work in progress is the Empire mechanic. So basically, players will get an income buff from their capital when they're small. Um, so these factions will be much more playable going forward. And it will fade away as the more cities you take. So you can see as Athens here, we've only got four settlements, but we're making a decent chunk of change, which is really cool to see because it's really going to help out with these very small and difficult starts. Let's now talk about something big, guys. Very big indeed. And that is the map. There are now 20 new settlements added, bringing the total up to 1831. This was to bring life to the Illyrians with quite a few new settlements in there for the RDAI and the Illyri Illyrians, but there's also been a few settlements added to the Greeks, the Ptolemies as well, basically to give a better representation of the map and also present new strategic regions and locations as well. Along with this, there's been loads of fixes to areas in the map that the AI was either getting stuck on or couldn't quite work out what to do. Fixing these river crossings, all that sort of thing. And terrain fixed around the Nile. So I'm sure you guys saw in my um, roads campaign with rain that we were having these crazy mountain, like sharp just right angled mountain battles around the Nile. That's all been fixed now. So no more crazy, crazy terrain in battles. And now settlement names have been separated into either Latin or Greek for the East and West differentiation. So that is the bulk of the video, guys. If you've got this far, thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. But I've just got a few final changes, miscellaneous changes that didn't really fit into any of the categories in there, which I'll give a little shout out to as well. So forts and watchtowers now are a little bit more expensive to build, much to my misery. <laughs> Agents have their movement points fixed as well, so they shouldn't have crazy too much movement or crazy too little movement. Um, new building and image UI for the remastered cultures. The Thracian culture doesn't have eastern battle speeches anymore, which of course is something that is really good. The Pontic reform bug has been fixed. Loads of new descriptions and all that sort of thing have been added for the new cultures, for cultures and factions that were missing them as well. The towers in cities have been nerfed a little bit so they won't go mental and kill a thousand troops. And religions don't cause unrest if they are in the same family of religions, which I think is a really massive change for what's going to be going on in some of these big empires like the Seleucids and the Ptolemies, making them a lot more manageable for you guys out there. So that is everything breezed over, guys, and hopefully gives you a taste of all of the videos that are to come in RIS Weekends. Now, I should have a PDF somewhere linked below that will have all of these patch notes on. So if you want to see all of the patch notes, patch notes, check that out. It will cover everything. Some of the things that I haven't been able to mention 
as well that you will see in there, which is just insane, the list that these guys have been working on. The attention to detail, the work ethic, it's just mental in my opinion, guys. So um, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you're looking forward to some brilliant RAS Weekends videos coming forward and of course, the brilliant new 0.6.4 patch for RTR Imperium Sorectum. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you all again on the next video.